Hey there, so a previous video we discussed 2D vectors, now we're going to move into 3D. And which is um, pretty much where we're focusing for multivariate calculus and for lots of real world problems. As you can imagine, we live in a 3D universe, or I suppose you could think of it as 4D if you consider we're traveling through time. Um, but in, in either case, um, we could describe a 3D vector in component form as um, our vector A equals uh, brackets A1, A2, A3 where a1, a2, and a3 are the vector lengths in the x, y, and z direction respectively. So the p position vector a equals 1, 2, 3 would have its tail a at the origin and its tip at the point b in 3 space 1, 2, 3. Now let's break this down a little bit and uh, just, just uh, track with me a little bit because we're, we're heading somewhere towards uh, some common notations for, for vectors. So using the algebraic method for adding vectors um, from the previous video, we could think of this vector as the addition of three different vectors, its x, y, and z components. So our vector a would be um, equivalent to the vector 1, 0, 0, plus the vector 0, 2, 0, plus the vector 0, 0, 3, right? Because to add vectors, you just add their corresponding x, y, and z components. So if, if we just add these their specific these specific x, y, and z components, we get that that vector a. Now let's break this down one more time. So we could say that that um, zero two zero vector, we could just decompose that into two into two vectors. We could call it um, zero one zero plus zero one zero, right? And take that last vector zero zero three vector. We could decompose that into three different vectors. 0, 0, 1 plus 0, 0, 1 plus 0, 0, 1. Now, why would we do that? Well, just bear with me a second because we're going somewhere. And what we actually just did in this final step is we can decompose this vector into its standard basis vectors. Um, so it turns out each of these vectors that we finally decompose it to is so helpful and so, so, used, so widely used that it's got its own nomenclature. So that one zero zero vector, that's going to be i. That zero one zero vector is our j, and that zero zero one vector is our k. And you notice that instead of that vector accent over here, we're going to be a little more specific. We've got a hat on it, and what that hat represents is this i, j, and k are the unit standard basis vectors. They're unit vectors, meaning that they have a magnitude of one. Um, so adding these one at a time, let's do this sort of um, algebraically. And, um, and graphically here, we have our a is equal to our i hat plus j hat plus another j hat plus k hat plus k hat plus k hat. And that ends up, when you add all these together, you can see that ends up yielding that, that vector that we started with, that vector 1, 2, 3. So we can actually simplify this a little bit. Instead of just adding these um, j plus j, we know from a previous video we can just, that's a scalar, right? So we can just call that 2j. And instead of k plus k plus k, we can call that 3k. And yeah, I probably should have picked a better um, coefficient for that one. But um, I assure you there's no, there's no uh, ill intentions with that, that choice. And this, on the left side, with the brackets, that's going to be our component form. And you'll see that's probably going to be most commonly used um, for this class because it's just a, it's just sort of the most compact form and kind of the easiest to deal with. But you'll definitely see a lot if you haven't already in physics that um, the i, j, and k hats. Um, that's that's a very popular way to um, denote vectors, and we call that the standard um, basis vector notation. And it can be useful for understanding the magnitude of a vector, which is a very important quantity, which we'll discuss in the next video. But until then, take care.